Today we're going to talk fire pager options for the average scanner person, or even a firefighter. Volunteer fire departments or on-call fire departments page people over the radio system. They also have something called um, Am I Responding or similar apps. So what we'll we'll do we first start out with? Mid-2000s, Icom Walkie Talkie. About 250 or so maybe to get started with this, that price. I gotta cut this tape off, it's not sticking right. Um, but anyhow, it has tone standby. Um, this is monitor mode, tone standby for all this stuff here. It works pretty well, but you also get a bonus. You get more channels, they monitor the railroads. You can talk on a local repeater if you wanna do, and um, more options. It's bulky though, not that heavy, but bulky. Second option is a venerable unication. Um, the second pager I've owned. Um, this here is a necessity if you live in a, a very heavy and or megahertz trafficked area where um, everything is mainly on an and or megahertz trunk system, digital trunk system. Um, it's not that big, but it's bulky. And as you can see, it's pretty beat up for me carrying all the time. Um, the police in my county, Davidson County, are fully encrypted. There's a listening to them. This has been hashed in my videos before, so we mainly focus on fire and EMS. The problem is, is that you got to constantly listen to EMS and constantly listen to fire. Um, there are different EMS priority level calls in this county. Um, but there's a certain level where everybody can roll on it. So something big is going down, the fire department is going to roll on it. Let me get this thing here. I've never been able to get this to program. I did some work on this earlier. I might upload the video, I might not. Um, this is an Apollo VP 101 pager. Turns on fine and everything. I just can't, I can't find a pinout for this. But it's not so much finding the pinout, I can't get into program mode. That's a huge issue. This is the battery for the unication. You get about eight hours out of it, but um, I kind of want to go back to the day where pagers batteries last for a long time, if left on. It charges pretty quickly too. This is another battery that I've had. I think this, might be the original battery that came with it. I taped it up because the label was falling off, just so I keep track of it. Bring in the Apollo Pro VP200. Uh, we're at 1.22. Anyhow, this here is all like the Minotaur 5, which is. Pretty much the last normal model roller page has an, has an arm and a leg. I got this for $25 or something on eBay. I was able to make my own programming cable because I found a pinout right here. And there'll be some pictures of how I did it and it's a video about how I did it. It works pretty well, but it's analog. Um, so there are some fade out points with it. And to be frank, the county doesn't have as strong of analog receive transmitters as they used to. This is better, but it's bulky and heavy. This is nice because it has stored voice and everything. Um, a is um, station 37 and 76, the two stations near me, because I don't want to monitor the fire department all day if I don't have to. It just it gets time. I do when I'm around the house doing things because it's interesting how many things happen. But if I'm with somebody or reading or relaxing, I don't want to hear the fire department EMS radio all day. B... It's just the fire department in monitor mode. C is the rescue squad. Just interesting. I use it more as a as a test way to test the pager because they're very busy. D scans everything. The rescue squad and EMS. That's pretty much it. You got your reset here. And then you got your stored voice here. Stored voice disappears very quickly once you turn it on and off, which is all that I need. This, on the other hand, is more like using a phone. This is lighter. This came with a charger, but the batteries are from 2006 era. They're obsolete. These are the latest and greatest. This particular brand I know nothing about. It's got good reviews on Amazon. In this case, very little negative reviews. Comes with a USB type setup. You can charge this on your mobile phone charger or any USB device. I've gotten a ton of life out of these batteries. I can't believe it. 
But unless you're dealing with a proprietary battery like this, which I really wish you in case you use a generic cell phone battery or something. Um, I just use these kind of batteries in my pagers now and other devices. So let's um, go into the intro about what I did. And um, originally I tried using Windows XP and VirtualBox to get it done and it worked. But that wasn't really the issue. The issue was finding the appropriate pinout, which was through a process of elimination. But luckily I got lucky with this. However, with the VP101 and the fact that I had directions on, I put this in programming mode, which is, it, it's eerily similar to the Minotaur um, 5. This here, this is the charger from for this radio here, the uh, VP101. I was able to narrow down, I'll insert the video in here. to show how I found out the pinout, but the problem is I got no schematic here. So that now is just down to three pins. So you got a ground, data RX, data TX, but it's a pain because the problem with this is I don't have a way, I don't know how this goes in programming mode. It, there's no directions on how to do it. And there's very little information about this pager. Single channel pager also. No, nothing about these. Nobody ever talks about these or anything. Um, I honestly think these are basically Motorola pages with different label on them. Anyway, you gotta take a wire hooked up to it, PL2033, which is very common. I'll put a picture of it up here. And you gotta hold the wires all together. So it's it's like really difficult because you're holding the wires and you're trying to get in there. You're trying to hold them, but you end up pulling up and pulling down and going in the wrong hole. It's a real pain. You could run them through here. I've tried this before. It doesn't work. Um, there's little to no information on this. I might contact the manufacturer about this. Maybe to see if they'll answer. Um, what's ridiculous about this pager is even people who sell this pager still listed on their websites, which the website looks very old, obsolete. Most of these fire pagers, except for these. I mean, these these are, these are good. They also make a VHF UHF version of this, but they're bulky. Um, even people that sell these pages don't really show how to program them or offer any programming for these. So that tells me, I mean, you're talking to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. More than likely, it's just an obsolete product. But this is a happy medium, I think. And this, again, pretty beat up, too. This usually stays at home. Although it doesn't monitor my city fire department, though. Um, so I might end up doing both. You know, I'm not on the fire department. Um, but, um, I've also decided to maybe take this with me, at least in a PT Cruiser, because at least I can do some rail fanning with it. All the channels that I cannot legally transfer on are, are set to, um, inhibit too, so don't be freaking out about that. So let's see what happened with the software here and what we had to do. Um, this is not something that's very pleasant, not fun. It takes trial and error and skill. I'm very happy I was able to program this because the main reason is, first of all, the um, programming cables or programming cradles that come with this, they're very expensive. Like, they're two, $300, almost the cost of the pager itself at an OEM MSRP price. And, they're, and all they really are is a glorified PL2303 or TTL type cable. So you get a TTL type cable for like 15 bucks off Amazon and do it yourself. Um it's it's not that difficult it really isn't it just takes patience and only two is the customization um when i sent this radio out to be pro when i bought the radio from the guy that sent it to me i i, I don't know what i did but i somehow fat fingered the tones for a couple of the departments i wanted to monitor and the tones were incorrect so um i had to um well you're sending it back to him and play the game and waiting and figure it out myself and there's a lot of customization that goes into this However, there's not many customizable options on these pages. It's more so me double verifying the tones, making sure the page is a narrow band, because it came out in an era when wide band was still out. So it's a wide band, narrow band option. Certain things, tweaking certain things. Um, I would say, though, this has a better receiver than that, of course, but this will get you through.
After all this, I feel comfortable. I had to, I had to change a couple things on here. Um, mainly, I had to change... Standard, standard. I changed that, got rid of that. Narrow band. I changed the squelch over the four, audio gain to three, so it'll sound better. It says here, if you click on this, recommended for narrow band. This came out in an era, 2007 ish, when um, narrow band was starting to come popular on the VHF side and UHF side. I think A Under Maker is already narrow band, and of course, our classic low band is not narrow band. I changed a couple things here. I think it's the best it's going to get now for what it is. Um, and that's that. I mean, it's pretty simple. You just got to find the pinouts, and that's the troubleshooting part of this. So it's got to page the lights on here. And it'll beep every few seconds saying that there's a page. And then you hit the side here. And it'll beep, I'll let you know. Then you get reset. Then as soon as you turn it on and off, um, it's gone. I mean, it's all you really need. It's not like the unication. The unication itself, well, great for your maker's capability. It is just, it's beat up for me carrying it, but it's just too heavy for what it is.